getting away! I'll bet that that man could run our company as well as Winthorpe. This is outrageous! I haven't done anything wrong! I'm not a thief! Hey, 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 hey! Have you people ever heard of toasters? You're a dead man, Valentine! Yeah. It was the deuce! Hey, everybody! He's Lewis! She's Penelope! I'm Billy Ray! He's Coleman! No, oh, wait, that ain't it! He's Randolph Duke! He's Mortimer Duke! She's Ophelia! I'm Beaks! No, that ain't it either! This is not Trading Places! This is now Vikings Report! With Drew! With Chris! With Ted! And even Jones's. <laughs> Folks, how are you? Drew, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great tonight. Episode 124. We've got a lot to go over with the Vikings roster. And the, we're covering the tight ends tonight. So I got the Jimmy Kleinsasser out for you, Ted. Jimmy Kleinsasser, a native North Dakotan, like our newest member of the ensemble cast of thousands, Christopher Gates. Chris, how are you this evening? Looking good, Billy Ray. Indeed, I am doing well. And yeah, Jimmy Kleinsaucer, pride of uh, Carrington, North Dakota. Graduated high school the same year as I did, so he's old now, just like I am. Oh my God. Mortimer, well, your brother's not well. We better call an ambulance. F him. My dad used to do color commentary for some of the high school football games back when I was in high school for one of the local radio stations. So I got to see Jim Kleinsaucer in uh, high school up in uh, Carrington a couple times. And that was like watching dudes try to tackle a school bus, man. That That guy was... That guy was invincible. I'm proud to see him from North Dakota. I'm proud to say I grew up on a farm. And, uh, you know, I think it's a really big thing. Red McCombs, when I was first drafted with the Vikings, before we even, like, introduced introduced, he came up to me and slapped me on the back and said, my hardest working hired hand was from North Dakota. And he led his team to a uh, state high school basketball championship with uh, Carrington, too. Their team went undefeated that year. I met Jim Kleinsasser's aunt. Doreen, believe it or not. She ran a daycare center out in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I was trying to find a daycare a place to put my daughter when I was going through MH53 school when I stationed out in Kirtland. I'm going to a place, a lady checked this place out. She gives me her card, says Doreen Klein's house. And I'm like, hey, this is like a really dumb question, but <laughs> sort of an unusual name. Are you related to a guy by the name of Jim Klein Saucer? And so this would have been like 2000. So it was only been like, right? He got drafted by the Vikings, what, 99? So we'd only been, he'd been with the Vikings like maybe a year. Yeah, 99, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was when Klein Saucer got drafted. I'm like, this is a dumb question, but the, the name, it's just so unusual. Are you related to a guy by the name of Jim Klein Saucer, tight end for the Minnesota Vikings, and her eyes light up? Oh, Jimmy's my nephew! Get the f*** out of here! No, I cannot. It's serious because it's very important. Well, I'm like, you're <laughs> kidding me. No way. So, yeah, we tie. Oh, he's just such a wonderful boy. I just love, I just love Jimmy. We're just all so proud of him. So, yeah. So. Doreen Klein Slasser, if you're out there, I, I don't know. You probably remember my, my daughter, Allie. She was like, I don't know, six or seven at the time. Anyways, anyways, I, I met Doreen Klein Slasser once. That's my claim to fame. That's <laughs> awesome, dude. Like. I had a friend go back to training camp one year, and the first day he was there, I said, how'd it go? He goes, that Jimmy K is a big boy. <laughs> he sure is. I actually did interview Jim Klein Slasser once when I was writing for Daily Norseman. That's right. That's right. When they had training camp at Mankato, it just so happened we were walking out. And if you never went, you had to cross the street. You had to wait, and a guy would kind of block traffic so you could cross at the crosswalk to go out in the field. It just so happened, you know, Klein Sass was right next to me, and I'm, you know, trying to play it cool. I'm a ninja on the outside, but I'm, like, fangirl on the inside. I'm like, because I'm a karate man, all right? Karate man bruise on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. What's up, Jim? <laughs> Jim Klein Sass is right next to me. <laughs> and he's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, hey, yeah, uh, can I ask you a couple questions? You know, after uh, after you're done, yeah, sure, no problem. And so that's where the, like the People's Champion article came from that I I really liked. He was a really good guy, really cool to talk to, and all that. Yeah, so I Jim Clyde, big dude, as you said, an enormous human being. I like little Viking stories to start the show. Yeah, yeah, a little trading places there, Ted. Anthony Tollison came through with that one for us. He did. Yeah, he sh shoots me a text and says, "Hey, I got a great idea for your next movie." I'm like. You know, it's Tolleson, so you you got you to gotta, gotta be wary. <laughs> uh. Well, 
Uh, Who remembers no. this movie? <laughs> we can't do Caligula, Thomas, and we, we, we just can't. Caligula, the emperor who devoured Rome. Grow, grow, grow. <laughs> He's like, you know, I'm like, I, so what's on your mind, Anthony? He's like, you know, hey, look, the Vikings are probably going to trade up for a quarterback, or that's kind of the, the rumor, the popular theory. How about you do trading places? I'm like, man, it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And everybody's on board, so trading places it is. So great job, Anthony. Good job, Anthony. Friend of the show, Anthony Tolleson. So are you saying we can't do Caligula or we won't do Caligula? Because <laughs> there's a difference, Ted. We're going to do that right after Cocaine Bear. <laughs> cocaine Bear. <laughs> it's on the list. Nice. Thanks, Anthony. Anthony, always, he's a good he's a good sport for the show, man. He follows us pretty closely. He does. Yeah, he does. Thanks, Anthony. All right. So, yeah, Trading Places, great movie. Eddie Murphy, Dan Aykroyd. A lot of stars in that movie. Jamie Lee oh. Curtis is in that movie. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis certainly was in that movie. Please do help me with my rucksack. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Smoking, smoking. Quite a departure from her Halloween series where she just, you know, screamed and bled. What was that movie she was in with uh, Schwarzenegger? Uh, True Lies. Yeah. Yeah. Every, yeah. Yeah, we know what you're talking about. Body double though, wasn't it? In True Lies, I don't think it was. I would Shout have to out go to the body double. Up, I, yeah, I don't. I don't think it was. There was no body double in Trading Places, boys and girls. No, no. no. Eddie Murphy. Rumble. Back when Eddie Murphy was starting, starting to make he was, movies. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hours and all that. Right at the height of his startup, he was like, "Was this before or after his his stand up comedy movie specials, Raw and all that stuff?" I'm trying to pull up his uh his it was acting before that here. because Raw yeah. was like eighty four, I think. I think the okay. movie was eighty two. Yeah, Trading Places came between forty eight hours and the first Beverly Hills cop. Yeah. That raw comedy stand up was one of the best shows I've ever seen, man. Oh god. And it would absolutely never get made today. No. Just just no. It's not a chance. No. Sad no. to say. It would be like five minutes long. It would be just awful. You know what, guys? I get sad when I hear people say, you know, this wouldn't be on today or wouldn't be, you know, I get angry about that. It just sucks. You know, Sanford and son wouldn't be on today. All in the family wouldn't be on today. Not a chance. The Jeffersons wouldn't be on today. I'm glad I got to grow up when I did and got a chance to watch it. Cause we all laughed. Yeah. Mom, throw down some money. The <laughs> ice cream man is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Astro Pop. Give me Astro Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Joe wants his ice cream show. Mom! Throw down some money! The ice cream man is coming! I got the ice cream and you can't have none. Yeah! 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 Because you are on the welfare and can't afford it. Oh, God. Toots is enough of our stupidity. Toots is how are you? Bring some respectability to this program. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. I happen to know that was a body double for Jamie Lee Curtis because I did it. Oh. Oh. All right, there you go. Remember, Drew? Oh, yeah, you did the Pretty Woman one, too. The poster. I did. Okay. (laughs) We've learned something today. Body double for many, many movies, especially ones I directed. Okay. I don't want to know the Drew Bunting filmography. I really don't. No, this is a film. I want them to remember me by. (laughs) When I start my tight end talk later, I usually have a a trivia question for you guys. Yeah. Can I go ahead and ask it now to get it out of the way? Because I got too many notes in front of me. Sure. Go for it. Okay, you got 40 seconds on the clock. Time starts when I finish the question. And you know it's going to be tight end related because tonight we're doing tight end. Okay. Current 
NFL tight ends who are making the most money per season. There are six. You don't have to name them in order, but give me the six top paid tight ends in the NFL. Go. Uh, Travis Kelsey. Correct. TJ Hawkinson. Correct. Darren Waller. George Kittle. Correct. Correct. Uh, Two more. Is Josh Oliver on there? No. He's not. Okay. Um, um the the guy from the Cowboys, whoever that like the, the Cowboys guy. Um Oh. It's not him, but uh, Mark Andrews has got to be on the list. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's one live. more. You got twelve seconds for one more. Uh oh, boy. Um, oh, um uh Higby for the Rams. No. Short from uh <clears throat> Dallas. Gasecki. No. Dallas Goddard. 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 That Goddard. was my next guess. That's who it was. We, were close. All yeah. right. we got five. That's pretty good. That's not bad. No, yeah, that's really great. That's great. That's great. All right. So five out of six. That's the bad. No, Start off with a little trivia. You guys are always good on the trivia. Speaking of trivia and good information and good knowledge, head on over to our affiliate on the World Wide Web, Purple Pain Forms. That's purplepainforms.com. A lot of great interaction over there. None of the stupidity you will find on <laughs> Twitter and some Facebook fan sites and all that. Not a really big community, but a very good community, very knowledgeable fans, folks that really kind of know their stuff about the Vikings and the salary cap and stuff that's going on with the combine and everything else. Uh, it's Purple Pain Forums, purplepainforums.com. Like Drew said, we're talking tight ends tonight. We got a little bit of Vikings NFL news, but before that, Drewster. Yeah. What time? Ta- what time is it, Ted? Yeah. I'm cooler than you are, so why don't you fix your little problems and light this candle? He's right. Light this candle. He surely is. Light the candle. Yes. Resume the countdown. All right, I'm cooler than you are. Why don't you fix your little problems and light this candle? He's right. Let's light this candle. He surely is. Light the candle. Yes. Resume the countdown. Yes! There we go. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Well, we're getting good at that, aren't we? Cooking oh. like 350 degree oil, man. Now, when this show airs, the NFL Combine will have been underway for, this will be the third day. Think big. Think positive. Never show any sign of weakness. Always go for the throw. Guys, I noticed you neither worked out nor threw yesterday when the quarterbacks threw at the Combine. Is there any, any particular reason, Chris? Are you waiting for your pro day? Uh, yes, absolutely. I am uh, <laughs> that the fact that I'm uh, not good at football. So I didn't do any of those. Uh, I didn't do any of those things, nor nor will I. So Drew, there's that. I noticed you didn't work out, nor did you throw yesterday either. No, I didn't throw. I didn't. I didn't run the forty. Although I no? drink forties. I drink forties. <laughs> if that counts. No, I didn't. I don't throw much anymore, Ted. You know my rotator cuff laziness. You combine the both. It's not much there. I have not watched one minute of the NFL Combine. I do not get excited about dudes in T-shirts and shorts running cone drills and throwing footballs. Look, for guys to do it for a living, bless you. Let me know who did well. Let me know who uh, uh, who benefited from the Combine. I don't put a whole lot of stock in who does what at the Combine. I think the NFL combine has sort of lessened in importance other than the interviews the the in-person interviews i think individual players are focusing more on their their pro days at their school we're gonna have an nfl combine wrap up next week we'll tell you who we thought did well who didn't do well but what are your thoughts on the combine is it kind of losing its luster drew is it still kind of a big deal or not i used to watch every second of the combine this is my third year of not watching any of it because i decided as i'm watching it I could either watch this or I could actually watch the players I'm looking at on tape playing in games with pads. I used to spend a lot of hours on that combine. I took those hours and transitioned them over to watching tape and evaluating guys that way. So I've made the transition of being a junkie for it to not even looking at it anymore. For so some people may like it. That's fine. I wanted to spend my time looking at the research on the other end. Okay. You know what a combine is? Combine is a place for everybody to gather, a bunch of dudes to drink and do extracurricular things. Give 
me a bottle of your best champagne. Billy Ray, honey, is that you? Who you think it is? Terrence, get the lady some champagne. In fact, champagne for everybody. You see him in the crowd sleeping with a clipboard on their lap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't put a lot of importance in it. And I used to watch it religiously, but I've changed my ways on it because I'd like to see the guys playing, you know, in, in games. Chris, that's what I hear from players. I mean, they say, look, this is not going to benefit me in any way that watching my tape wouldn't do. And other than I think maybe the interviews with the individual teams, finding it hard to disagree with them. I, I, I don't know what, how you feel about that or not. One minute you're up half a million in soybeans, and the next, boom, your kids don't go to college and they've repossessed your Bentley. Are you with me? Yeah, well, we got to kill them. Yeah, I think a lot of the guys go like the bigger names. Like I think I saw Marvin Harrison Jr. basically said he's going for interviews and whatnot, but not actually doing anything. Jaden Daniels, kind of the same way. So, you know, there's a lot of it that just seems like kind of a waste of time. Like, you know, I don't care how fast an offensive lineman can do his 40 yard dash because. How many times am I going to ask an offensive lineman to run 40 yards? It it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, there there are drills that I know translate into into like on field abilities and skills and whatnot. But you know, like you said, you're out there. There's t-shirt and shorts. There's no crowd screaming. There's no defenders out there trying to wreck what you're doing. I, I understand some of the uh, the appeal with it because you know it's been about two weeks since the Super Bowl happened, and we've got about two weeks until the start of free agency and whatnot and by god it's football so let's watch what's going on uh, in indianapolis but you know I'm, I'm just not nearly as fascinated with it as i was i look at the results that the guys put up when they uh, get posted and whatnot and listen to the the people that actually do this for a living tell me who uh who improved their stock whose stock kind of fell and whatever who kind of helped their case and that sort of thing but no, I, it it doesn't really have a lot of appeal at this point anymore. I can just read the uh, read the output from the the folks who know way more about this than I do. Well, God bless the NFL for making their sport a year round event because one of the effects of it becoming a year round thing is the salary cap is now up to two hundred fifty five point four million dollars, and I, I think one of the reasons is things like the draft and the NFL combine and the revenue from advertising and all that stuff. So there's been some benefits to it, but yeah, I, I'm kind of with you guys. I, I don't care. I I'm, like my grandkids are, it's the weekend. I'm, I'm going to go do stuff with them. Hey, Papa, you want to go bowling? Or you want to go, you want to go to the zoo or something? No, 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 no. I, I want to, I, w- I want to watch JJ McCarthy sit here in his shorts and t-shirt throw a football and play catch with a guy. Well, you don't want to go play catch with me. No, 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 no. I must watch. J.J. McCarthy throw. Yeah, I don't I don't get it, man. I just don't get it. I don't know. It's kind of like Vikings Report. We don't get too much off in the weeds about sand in your pants and all that. That's not our show. Majority of fans don't care about the guy's size hands and all. They don't. We'll, we'll give you a combine wrap-up next week, and we'll tell you, you know, who may have improved their draft stock and who may have hurt themselves and, and all that stuff. But go enjoy the combine if that's your thing. What you got, Drew? I got a quick question. What is that? Have you guys ever seen that Wonderlick test thing? Did, did you get the report? You see the money. Okay, torture of them. Thank you, Briggs. What are your thoughts on the Wonderlick test? I, I I think a lot of those tests, to me, they're useless. It's kind of like a quasi sort of IQ test, I think. Yeah. For the most part. Kind of like the one year, like in school, I think it's usually like your sophomore or junior year. They have you take like the the standardized test where you got to fill in the little circles on the the paper, and you get like so much time to do it. I've got my eye on you, Jay Quiller. Are you out of your goddamn mind? What? Do you want to go to war, Balaki? No. Because we could go to war. No. I'm for real. I'm for real. I think it's like 50 questions in 12 minutes for the Wonderlick or something like that. Now they have whatever this S2 test is that everyone says CJ Stroud did really bad on last year. So apparently that's a accurate gauge of, of how people <laughs> can, can perform on a football field. I mean, yeah, they, they nailed it with CJ Stroud. That's for sure. So NFL combines is underway. It ends tomorrow and we'll give you a recap of it next week. So it is now time for our off season series to continue. Grayson, why don't you tell us what we're doing?
Hey everyone, it's Ted's grandson Grayson, and now it's time for the Vikings Report Offseason Positional Analysis segment. Hit it, Papa. All right, we're up with tight ends this week. So the first three weeks, the quarterback, running back, two big positions in need. Wide receiver, not so much a position in need. I'm kind of split on whether or not tight end is a position in need. I mean, the Vikings have TJ Hawkinson and Josh Oliver. I would say no normally, but then TJ Hawkinson took that hit late in the season against Detroit from Kirby. Dirty-ass Detroit Lions player. Tore his ACL, had surgery. I don't know if he's going to be ready to go. I, if Hawkins is ready to go, I don't think this is really much position in need at all. If he's not ready to go, is Oliver the guy? I don't know. But on the roster right now, heading into 2024, your two guys are TJ Hawkins and Josh Oliver. How are you feeling about that right now, Chris? I think they're a pretty good duo when both of them are healthy. I mean, Oliver, I think, caught more passes than I, a lot of us thought, or at least more than I thought he was going to catch last year and showed himself to be a pretty decent receiver. He was primarily brought in to be a more blocking type tight end, let the Vikings use uh, more two tight end setups. Hawkinson's obviously one of the best tight ends in the league when he's healthy. I think when he got hurt, he was either uh, leading or in second place among tight ends in receptions and yardage. He was on pace to have the first thousand yard season for a tight end since uh, Joe Sensor would have been only the second thousand yard season for a uh, Vikings tight end, but uh, he came up, I believe it was 30 yards short. But if both of those guys are healthy, they're just about as good a duo as you can have. And so if Hawkinson's healthy and ready to go, this is not a super big position of need, I don't think. How are you feeling about that, Drew? Depends on if he's ready to go. I don't think he will yeah. be ready to go. That happened pretty late in the season. I'm kind of looking at more coming back halfway through the season. And that's what I'm hoping for, or maybe week six or something. But if he's ready to go week one, all the power to us because we need Hawkinson on yeah. the field this year. I think, Oliver, it's time to step up. He makes $7 million a year. He's got to step up and, and get it done. I mean, that's a lot of money. Yep. Oliver is a really good blocking tight end. Very, very good blocking tight end. He has that covered. And I think from what I've seen from some of his catches, he has the ability to not only be a possession receiver, but he has some good yard after catch ability. I would like to see him step up, be the number one for a while. He had 22 catches, 213 yards and a touchdown. He also caught passes for 12 first down. And I think that's important to note. He can move the chain. You look through the free agent list and the draft list, and you think, is there anybody better than Josh Oliver? I don't know. Talk about free agents then. Okay, well, they only have two on the roster, so they're going to have to address the position in some way, shape, or form, whether it's via the draft or free agency. Well, where's Munt and Muse? Those guys are gone. Well, they're unrestricted free agents, so that was going to be my next question. So Johnny Munt or Ben Ellison, you you want one or both or neither of those guys back, Drew? Uh, I would say no. Okay, Chris? Yeah, I'm not super enthusiastic about either of those guys. I mean, elfson has been hurt quite a bit. He might be back. I think of those two, Munt probably has a much better chance of uh, being back next year. The one thing I noticed when Hawkinson went out, there was a significant drop-off in production. Now, I, obviously, it's going to happen when you have a guy like TJ Hawkinson leave or go out due to injury. But there were some passes when Johnny Munt was in and ball was thrown to him that TJ Hawkinson would have caught, that Josh Oliver, if he was in, would have caught, that I would argue that if another guy was in, would have caught. And I, I think for that reason, I don't know that Johnny Munt will be back. So if you look at that and you look at the free agent list, I mean, you've got your top tier guys like Hunter Henry and Dalton Schultz and Gerald Everett and Mike Isecki. I put those guys off to the side. I, I don't think the Vikes are going there. But you got guys like, Kind of the next tier guys like Noah Fant and Austin Hooper. I don't think the Vikings are going there either, unless Hawkinson's rehab takes a setback. And I, I haven't really heard how it's going. Is he ahead of schedule? He's behind schedule. I'm assuming he's on schedule. So if that's the case, I would expect him to start training camp on the pup list and just kind of take it from there. Maybe he'll be ready to go, but he might have to go on IR, which means he'd miss the first four games and just kind of take it from there. We'll see. But they would probably have to dip into free agency to get somebody. And I'm looking at a guy like Drew Sample. Exactly. My first guy. That's yeah. the first guy on my list. Drew okay. Sample. All righty. Who else would you have? You could look at a guy like Harrison Bryant, I think, from, okay. uh, from Cleveland. He'd be a guy to uh, potentially kind of take a look at here. He's only 26, so he's uh, he's got plenty of miles left. I have Adam Troutman on there. Okay. Adam Troutman has been misused by both by the Saints and by Denver, they haven't used him right. I did a draft right up on him, and when I did it, Ted, I don't know if we were 
started the show by then. I think it was before we started the show, but that dude looked like Gronk, and they're not using him right. He needs to be one of those guys that are H back or whatever and put him out in the slot. I mean, I like Adam Troutman. Didn't the Saints give up a ton of picks to move up and draft yes. Troutman whatever year he was drafted? He was number two on my tight end board. What about Colby Parkinson from the Seahawks? That was my second guy. Drew Sample and, and Colby Parkinson. Yeah. He made yeah. $990,000 last year, and he caught three more passes than Oliver. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. We've also got the fossilized husk of Mercedes Lewis. He's still <laughs> out there. He's uh, he's 40. There's another Jimmy Graham. 38. Yeah. Jimmy Graham, who used to play basketball from, from what I understand. There's a guy out there. I think you know who I'm talking about. And he don't was... say Herb Smith Jr. Because no, we're, not, we're not signing, we're not signing Herb Smith. Jesus. Former second rounder out of the University of Alabama. We've seen that movie, Ted, and it ended really Roll badly. Roll Tide. Roll damn Tide. I'd rather have Eddie Murphy when the cops are lifting him up with the legs. When he's hiding his legs on that board. I'd rather have Eddie Murphy from The Nutty Professor. I think. I mean, Jesus. Oh, Lord. No to Irv Smith, Ted. That's a big... I know. I, I know. I, I know. <laughs> Farrell Brown's a guy that might be a possibility, but he's, he's like right at 30 years old. He doesn't really seem to be, in terms of age, the type of guy that Quasey would target. If they go after a dude in free agency, I think that would tell you they're not confident with where TJ Hawkinson is in his rehab, and they're not expecting him to be ready to go for the start of the regular season. There's definitely some openings for some guys that aren't going to break the bank on you. It would not surprise me if they bring back Ben Ellison, though. We'll see. All right, Drew. You got your big board ready? We always have to go back and look at the old drafts for a couple minutes just to make it worthwhile to keep everybody apprised of the info. I don't know if there's a, a Sam Laporta in this draft, maybe with Bowers, but there was how many taken last year? 15 taken, six in the first and second round. There was six tight ends taken last year in the first two rounds, which is kind of high. Normally, you don't get that many yeah. in the first two rounds. Kincaid and then Laporta and then you know some other guys. Next was taken by Detroit at 34 with Laporta. 45 tight ends taken in the last three drafts, which averages out to how many per draft, Ted? Uh, uh, carry the 115. There you go. 15. I'm expecting about the same this year. I usually don't land all 15 on my board off there. I usually get 9 or 10. Let's get to the list. First, I have Jennifer Lawrence. And then I have Megan Fox. Hold up. No, 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 no. Jessica no. Alba is wrong, number, coming wrong, in number three. Wrong and then tight got, end list. Wrong tight end list. Go, go. No, football players. Football players. Oh, this. Oh, okay. Shakira was my number four. Oh, that, no, it's, not, it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, I. Okay. Restaurant quality tight ends there. I'm not saying it is. Yeah? Okay, I had the wrong tight end board. Let's let's get this done. Brock Bowers, how much do you guys want to know about him? Because we're not getting him. Thank God you didn't have the wrong wide receiver board last week. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah. <laughs> Brock Bowers does everything. He is a great, great player. I got him down as, on my uh, no-miss list, like Marvin Harrison Jr. You're not going to go wrong with this guy, whoever gets him. I'll just throw a couple items out there, even though we're not going to get him. We're not going to spend any time with him. 35 games with Georgia, 175 catches, 2,500 yards, and 26 touchdowns. This guy had a stretch last year in four weeks, 31 catches, 464 yards, and four touchdowns. The guy just takes over games. He's going to be fantastic. He's ready to go week one. He is a great tight end, and it's basically him and Sanders and everybody else. But we're not going to spend a lot of time on him because we aren't taking him, even if he falls to 11. I don't think we're taking him. If they do, fire everyone. Tight ends, is, it's, it's changed a lot. It used to be just a blocking tight end and a possession receiver. Now you got the hybrid thing moving in. Mm -hmm. So I got some of these guys. Number two and number four on my list are guys that can't block a plug nickel but they're great great receivers and we start out with jatavian sanders first i want to throw a little tidbit out for sanders the texas longhorns have not had a tight end taken in the top 50 since 1982 when the great larry sampleton was taken by the eagles he was taken at number 47 that's the highest they've had in the last 40 plus years 
I think Jatavion Sanders breaks that mold this year. I think he's going to go early in the second because he's a tremendous receiving tight end. 45 catches, 682, two touchdowns. The guy just explodes off the line of scrimmage. You can't get him to block anybody. I watched his tape. I couldn't find one good block by the guy. He just kind of stands <laughs> there and bodies up and gets his ass run over. But uh, if you're looking for just a guy you want to catch the ball, he's the best guy in the draft. It's going to depend on the system Sanders goes to, but when you watch his tape, I mean, as you see, he's just smooth. He's a smooth pass reception guy. But this is what they're turning into, is guys like Tavion Sanders. If you watch him play, this is what he's turning into. Had to put him at number two. I don't often put guys really high on my list, Ted, that are just one-dimensional, that can't do the blocking too. You know me. I like to have the blocking tight end who can also catch passes, much like Josh Oliver. But you can't deny Sanders' ability catching the ball. He's so good at receiving tight end. As a receiving tight end, his blocking doesn't matter. Let's hope that Patrick Mahomes doesn't get him because they can run some two tight end stuff with him and Kelsey. So I would think about making him a wide receiver or some kind of weird hybrid guy on my team. Number three on my list, and I'm going to turn it over to Ted because he previews all of the Buckeyes because I can't stand saying the word Buckeyes. Ted, tell us about Cade Stover. And then I got a great tidbit on Cade Stover. Cade Stover, most importantly, 0-3 against Michigan. So, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, really good tight end. He's one of those safety blanket guys. If you look at his production, it went up steadily in his three years at Ohio State. He had pretty good numbers in 2023, but he still gets overlooked a lot because look at who the wide receivers are. It's been Chris Olave. It's been Emeka Abuka. It's been Marvin Harrison Jr. Look who the quarterbacks have been. You know, you had C.J. Stroud. Comic Accord and all his drama with transferring and all that. I mean, he just kind of is lost in all of the noise of all the other players that have been at Ohio State. But he's he's a very solid, good football player. He, he moves the chains. He's a very sure-handed guy. He's got really solid yards after catch for a tight end. A lot of tight ends just get the ball and kind of just get hit right away and sort of go down. He can get you yards over the middle. I don't think he's a great blocker. I think once he gets engaged with a dude, he can move him or he can hold a block for guys like Travion Henderson to get to the second level. I think he sort of has issues getting to a guy to get to the block, if that makes sense. You have him as a second-round guy, I, which surprises me. I think he has second-round talent. I just kind of think because he has been so overlooked or just kind of there's so many other good players at Ohio State on offense that it was hard for him to break through. I, I kind of thought he was a third or maybe late mid third or late third round guy kind of just based on how he fit into the offense and, and the amount of production he had over the course of his time at OSU. Although he had pretty good numbers for 2023 compared to his first two years there. I didn't want to drop him down because of he wasn't getting enough chances because the balls were going everywhere else. Mm -hmm. I don't That's I didn't fair. want to, pen, I didn't want to penalize him for that, but. When you watch tight ends over the years, there's certain guys when you watch them on tape that have game-changing ability. He's got that. He's got that gene in him where he can change a game. Yeah. Like Kyle Rudolph used to do at Notre Dame. Every time you and I were watching an Ohio State game, because you and I would keep tabs on the enemy, every time he, he, he would catch a pass, I, I always said, man, I'd love to have Kate Silver on the Viking because he would be, see he would be a great addition to the Viking. This is before the TJ Hawks trade, of course, but I don't think it's going to happen right away. But I think by year two or three, he's going to be like a Dallas Goddard. I think so too. Jake Ferguson, Dalton Schultz kind of guy. He's going to be one of the top ten tight ends of the NFL. I I truly believe that. Great comparison. I think if uh, he does fall in the draft, that's got to be something you at least have in your sheet later on if he drops to third or fourth. He's a three-down tight end. You start week one. He's ready to go. Maybe not year one. I think he'll be a, a tight end two year one competing for a starting gig in year two. Let me give you a real good tidbit on Cade Stover. Okay. When he was a senior in high school, Cade Stover played running back in safety or running back in linebacker. As a running back, he got 1,477 yards and 17 touchdowns. And as a linebacker, he got 165 tackles and four interceptions. Jeez. Dang. He got Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Ohio for that. That's athletic. That's athlete. That's game changer. And I like Kate Stover. Who do we got next? Jaheim Bell. No blocking. 
inline blocker gets <laughs> ran off the line and gets pancaked when he blocks. You're not gonna you're not gonna get this guy to be a blocker. You're getting him for his grade A speed, his size and speed. You gotta love these highlights that I'm showing you right now. He transferred to Florida State from South Carolina. You know, Florida State, every week we do these positions, they've had a top ten guy mm-hmm. in every position yeah. we've done. They had the running back, Trey Benson, then they had Jordan Travis, and then last week Keon Coleman, and now Jaheim Bell. Would have been interesting if Travis would have stayed healthy to see how they did in the playoffs. Like I said, not a blocker, but a dynamic receiver in the open field. These guys, some of these hybrid guys are just when you watch him play, you don't know whether it's a wide receiver or a tight end. He's a great, great player. Jaheim Bell, number four on my list. Number five, we got Minnie Hawkinson, Ted. He's got some bulking up to do, but he reminds me of Hawkinson. Just a yeah. smaller version, like a poor yeah. man's Hawkinson. 64 catches, 767 yards, and six touchdowns. Much like his mentor before him, Trey McBride. Yeah, Trey McBride. They ran the offense through Trey McBride, and they ran the offense through this guy. They run their offense through the tight end. I do like him as an inline blocker. He's a guy that gives you pretty much all the way around, play H-back. CSU did a ton of work in the screen game, outside screens. He caught him. He was blocking for him. He's very, very well-versed in the screen game. You want a guy that already has that play scheme figured out for a screen, he's probably the best screen tight end in here. But he just his game reminds me of, of Hawkinson, the way he plays. He's got a little bit of run after catch, a little bit of wiggle, but he's got sure hands. He's got to add some mass to his frame, as you see. He's kind of a small dude and learn how to get a little bit better separation. But he'll be, in a couple of years, a really, really good tight end in this league. Remember, Trey McBride, his first year with the Cardinals, did nothing. And then last year, he was kicking people's asses. I call him a top 10 NFL tight end as well. In Trey McBride's defense, my first year with the Cardinals, I did nothing either. So, <laughs> But Ted, you're an anomaly. <laughs> So let's go down these guys kind of farther down. Do you think the Vikings might target, because they've got a lot of later round draft picks, fifth, sixth, seventh round. Do you think they might target a tight end later in the draft, just kind of as maybe insurance in case Hawkinson isn't ready? I would think they probably would. And, you know, if we're talking about guys on this list that Drew's put together, one of the best pieces of advice from the uh, the past few years or so is to uh, draft tight ends from Iowa. Because, you know, despite the fact that they have the worst damn offense in college football year after year, <laughs> they keep cranking out. I mean, you you got Hawkinson, you got Noah Fant, you got George Kittle, George you got Kittle. Sam Laporta. They're turning into to TEU over there in Iowa, despite the fact that they don't have a quarterback that can actually get anybody the football 90% of the time. So uh, I see there is an Iowa tight end toward the bottom of Drew's list here. So uh, maybe that's a guy they target, you know, and just hope they they hit on another one. I'm glad you brought him up. He played for Michigan before he transferred to Iowa. If this guy can stay healthy, Eric All will be a second-round talent. He'll be right up with those top guys. But his injuries have pushed him down on the list. It's gonna, he's going to get drafted late if he gets drafted at all. People are so worried about his injuries. When he played at Michigan, he was the next Jake Butt, Ted. Was he really? Yes. He was tearing it up. And Eric All was one of the best weapons they had on their offense. He he had an amazing couple seasons there, but they had, you know, they had a bunch of guys come in. They had Barner, who's on my list. He was in there. They had like eight tight ends, and he wanted to play, and he was friends with Cade McNamara, who got in the portal. Yeah. Cade McNamara, the old quarterback for Michigan, who played there before McCarthy. He was the quarterback for McCarthy. He knew McCarthy was going to start, so he's going to transfer. He got in the portal and went to Iowa. I knew it. I knew the next day Eric All was going to be right behind him because they were buddies. So, McNamara took Eric all with him and he had this horrible back injury in 2022 and then he tore his ACL last year oh wow but when he's healthy that dude is awesome he's a great tight end stretch the field great hands can block really good at finding the open areas in the zone Eric all if he didn't have injuries he'd have been probably in my top four He's a really talented individual Dang. I was bummed to see him leave Michigan because he was he was well on his way to making himself the first tight end taken or the top, you know, he's like schoon maker. Michigan does pretty well with the tight ends too. Yeah. But when all left, I thought that's, that kind of sucks. And then he got hurt. And then he had the back thing and the torn knee last year. McNamara had an ACL last year. So both the transfers got hurt. So that's karma for leaving Michigan. You, you gotta think about it. <laughs> wow. You're going to leave Michigan. 
Wow, yeah. that's just rude, man. Besides the stupid transfer idea, he did really well. He did really well at Michigan, 6'4", 255. I like that guy. And uh, he does fall in the line of Iowa tight ends, Chris. He just needs to prove himself. And I think somebody's going to take a chance on him because of the upside. Eric All has a lot of upside, man. He's one of the guys on my Viking list. I got three guys on my Viking watch. I got Holker, who I already went over. And then I got Eric All late. And then Trey Knox, Ted. We got to talk about Trey Knox. Okay. No relation to the great Amanda Knox, Ted, no. as we all remember. <laughs> Was she the murder the love thing in, in Italy? Yeah. She was in prison for like five years, and then they found out they screwed up, so they had to let her out. Yeah. No relation. No relation to him. Otherwise, okay. he would have been falsely okay. accused of murder. I have to start out by saying this cat's happy, Ted. He's just a happy dude. I'm going to throw his picture up here. Look at how happy Trey Knox is. Hey, look <laughs> at that. He's just happy to be a, looked at for the draft. He was happy to be at South Carolina. He played at Arkansas for four seasons. This is the guy that went from wide receiver to tight end after four seasons, Chris. And I like those guys that had the wide receiver background that go to tight end. I do. Mm -hmm. 37 catches, 312, two touchdowns. Excellent speed, 4-4-40. Four, four, very powerful runner in the open field. Trey Knox is on the Vikings watch list for me. I think there's a ton you can do with him. And I think Kevin O'Connell would like to have Trey Knox on his team. Well, I would be happy, too, if they named an Army Ford after me where we kept all of our gold. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Uh, the, the last guy I want to ask about is uh, the last guy you got on the list there. The, uh, the local kid uh, played his high school ball at St. Cloud and then went on to... Uh, the University of Minnesota in uh, Brevin Span Ford because that dude is large. He's like six eight, like two seventy or something. Just he's a big dude, and he he seems like he could be the kind of guy that you know. I don't know if he'd be a long term developmental uh, kind of thing, or if he'd be one of those guys you know he could he could be a blocker kind of early on. But yeah, he he's a guy that's kind of intriguing just because you know, like I said, he's huge. Size wise, he's the guy you want on the end of the line because he's a good blocker too. He's not a very physical player. He has good hands, but I noticed in, in a lot of his tape, he doesn't have a lot of yak yard ability like AJ Barner. Those are old school tight ends. Span Ford and Theo Johnson and Barner. Those are your old school guys that aren't going to wiggle around anybody. Brevin Span Ford, 6'7, 270. I mean, come on. You're right. That's a big dude. He's the tallest guy out of my top 15, but it seems like if he's got that much size, he would be more physical. Doesn't seem like he wants to mix it up and get those contested catches. He doesn't. I hope he gets drafted, but he doesn't jump off the film at me that much. But he's so big and takes up so much space. I mean, you could do a lot in the run game if that guy could turn into a blocker. The best blocking guy I got, I think, is probably Barner from Michigan. He's probably the best blocker. There's more receivers in this draft tight end wise, Ted, than blockers. That seems to be the evolution of tight end. They've evolved more into pass catching weapons over the last 10, 15 years. You know, Ben Sinnott from Kansas State, who I have at number six, I believe, he's like a mini Jim Kleinsasser, who we have the jersey of right here. Really? Yeah, he's not nowhere near the size, but super productive. His final football, this while Ben Sinnott is the guy, he's the Blake Corum of this, my top 15. He's the all heart, easily coachable, makes his team better, fires people up. Ben Sinnott is, is one of those high energy players. 49 catches for 676, very productive. But his last football game last season, when the bowl game against Iowa State, it was a blizzard. There was like 13 inches of snow on the ground. And Ben Sinnott caught 10 passes for 136 yards and a touchdown in the snow. He's going to be more of an H-back type guy, which Jimmy was. Not an elite blocker. He probably needs to work on the blocking. A lot of these guys need to work on the blocking. But he's the big energy guy in the draft, the tight end. He's just one of those guys you'd like to have on your team because he's a football player. He's a good attitude. I'd love to have Sinnott on the team. All right. Well, that'll about do it for the uh, tight end position. Next week, we will be covering what position, Drew? Tackles. Tackles. We got tackles, sackles, tackles. And then the week after that, we got centers and guards will be bunched up together. That's how we Okay. Do it. That will do it for the offense. We got two more weeks of offense and we'll flip over to the yes. defensive side of the ball. So we got tackles next week and then we will finish with the interior offensive line and then we will flip over to defense. Yeah, baby. Yeah. All right. So right now we are going to take a little bit of a break and we are going to come back for trivia. An original ringmaster. 
Finally. Still using a phone line, eh, Pez boy? <laughs> Get high-speed internet access with Charter Pipeline from the company with the most advanced digital platform. Trivia is back, and I have a lot of categories. Three of them are picture categories. Two of them are just regular kind of trivia. So I have you guys playing separately. Is that okay against each other? I guess. Okay. Sure. That works. All right, so whoever answers first, and if you guys answer at the same time, I'll just call it because I can. Okay. All right. So the first one is finish the quote. This is like quotes from any kind of NFL player, not just the Vikings. So you'll see the quote. I'll start to read it, but if you know it, just, just shout it out. All right. For 100, show me a good loser and I'll show you. A loser. That was Chris. Good job. All right. A loser. All right. For 200, you play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. You play to win the game. the game. God damn it. Nope. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Nope. Hello, you not play it. to win the game. What else did he say? Well, I don't know. That one. Yeah, that one, I, if it's not you play to win the games, I I have no idea. He said because it matters. Because it matters. Oh. All right, for 300, <laughs> when you're good at something, you tell everyone. When you're great at something, everyone tells you. Good enough. They'll tell you. Good job. Okay. Wow. Can Chris sit out this second? <laughs> <laughs> All right, 400. Self-praise is for losers. Be a winner. Stand for something. Always have class. And always have a turducken. A boner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Boom. Be humble. Humble. All right. Stumped you guys twice. Last one for 500. Success isn't measured by money or power or social rank. Success is measured by your discipline and... How many guns you own? That's from Ditka. It might be mustache. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's not do this category. <laughs> Why? Why you have four hundred points? Why you've done good in the category, man? Yeah. By your discipline and and talent. I, I don't know. No idea. Inner, Inner peace. peace. Yeah, you guys wow. suck at this category. Because that's that's what I had immediately associate with Mike. Yeah, Inner, Inner peace, peace is what I just kind of think. Mike Dick is all. Namaste. Inner Peace is my other tight end list. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, tight end trivia. This comes from Anthony Tollison. Oh, God. No, it's fine. For 100. Morgan State, 03. Waller. No. No. Vesante Shanko. Yes. Oh, my Dude. God. Chris. That's awesome. There is no limit to the amount of meaningless crap I have <laughs> in my brain. That is well done. <laughs> For 200, North Dakota, 99. Two Good job, Ted. Ted didn't wait around on that. 300, Westchester, 79. Joe Setzer. <laughs> Damn. I like how you answer. Joe Setzer. I gotta get the answers in, man. I'm like way behind. All right, now you're tied. 400, Brown University. Steve Jordan. Steve Jordan. That was Drew, actually. 500, Grambling State, 10th round, Raiders. Dave Casper. Oh. Yeah. No. No. Byron Chamberlain. No. Andrew Glover. I think it is Andrew Glover. Yes, it is. Ed Glover! <laughs> Ted's related to him. That's not fair. Good job. Okay, I'll start with stupid draft terms. So you're going to see a picture, and it's not the usual picture puzzle where you have to put together the words. It's just a picture. And based off of what you see, you have to tell me what the word that I'm looking for is, or the term, all right? Stupid draft terms for 100. Sand in your pants. Sand in his pants. What? Sand in your pants? No. Ah, I got his hand in the dirt. Yes! (laughs) (laughs) There we go. Good job, Drew. Plays with his hand in the dirt. 200, name the term. Plays well in space. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Chris got that? Oh, I thought I had that. All right. Nice clue. 300. Oily hips. <laughs> no. Uh, he's got a he's got a big high motor, high motor guy. High motor. <laughs> yes. Ted got that one. What a great clue. Good job, Ted. All right. For 400, name the term. Ball hog. No. Uh, um, they're all mine. 
Oh, man. <laughs> What's on the balls? That's what she said. 50-50 guy? Oh! 50-50 uh, catches a 50-50 ball. Yes! <laughs> well, specifically gets all the 50-50 balls. <laughs> nice. All right, Drew, you guys are close. 500, name the term. <laughs> Passes the eye Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Good job, dude. Oh, that's <laughs> tremendous. Okay, now I have to tell you, too, that I drew all of these, so this is extra special. You drew them on a piece of paper? No, I drew them on the computer. Okay, so these are stupid Vikings. Name the player. That Jordan Addison? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? What am I looking at? It's Jordan Addison. He's going 140 in a 55. Oh, I didn't know he was in a car. 200. Name the player. Or name the person. Oh, Oh, who did something stupid in Vegas? Um, oh, Viking play. Drew, you don't count. Oh, uh, the offensive coordinator. Um, West Phillips. <laughs> oh, my <fuck laughs> God. <it. laughs> I gave that one away. Good job. You did. My bad. All right, 300. Name the player. Brett Favre. <laughs> yes. <laughs> These are pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for 400. Name the players. Go on, Bo. Go on, Fred Smoot, Mo Williams, Dante Culpepper. Dante Culpepper. And? And there was one. Oh, Brian McKinney. Brian yes. McKinney. Brian McKinney. <laughs> Good job. All right, for 500, name the player. Ontario Smith. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is that a wizard name? Oh, yeah. I don't even want to know. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wait, before we go on, I want you I want you to know I'm watching TV and she's Tootsis is on the other side of the couch and she's working on this thing for hours. And she's laughing as she's doing it and I'm going, What the hell are you doing? And she's cracking up as she's drawing. I didn't know she was drawing all these. Oh god. Alright, same kind of category, but this could be any player. Alright. Oh, Michael Michael. <laughs> yes. That was Chris. Name the player. Pac-Man Jones. Yeah. <laughs> script club. I do like the alternative spelling of script. That's that's nice. Down to the script club. I've been talking about the script club. That's what he the called script it. Club. Yeah. Oh, script club. All right. Name the player. Jason Pierre. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> That's a damn good artwork right there. Oh my god. All right, let's see. Drew, I don't think you can win, but Ted, you can catch up. Name the player. Oh, Jesus. Oh, um, I want to say Kirby Puckett, but this is football. Oh, uh, Ben Roethlisberger. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> That's the best one! <laughs> Ben Roffle something. Oh my god. Okay, 500. Name the player. Oh, Plaxico Burns. Oh, yes! <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> Big shout out for Toots' drawing ability. Oh, oh absolutely. well done. That is, that is outstanding. Oh, trivia is back with a bang. <laughs> Big bang theory. Oh, that'll put a wrap on episode 124. That was absolutely tremendous. Ben Roethlisberger. Oh, and Plaxico Burst ending with a bang. That was tremendous. Oh, folks, thanks for joining us. We will have a combine wrap up and we will uh, tackle the tackle position next week. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for doing, for commenting and everything you do to support the show. Really appreciate it. I'm done talking. I'll try to do better the next time. Brother Drew, Brother Chris, take us home. Episode one, two, four is in the books. Dude. I missed trivia. That was great. That was tremendous. Good to have that back. Thank you for all the hard work, Tunces. You guys always make me smarter with doing these positional breakdowns, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Vikings got a lot of work to do. So do we. We've got a lot of other positions to cover, maybe six or seven more. A little bit of trading places tonight. Shout out to the great Don Amici, even though he can't hear me. This was fun. Thank you for liking the show, subscribing, and being positive. Let us know here at the show if there's something you want to see. If there's a segment you want to see started or 
You want a movie you want to do? Throw it out there. Like we did with tonight. We did Anthony Tollison's, the movie he wanted to do. And it was a great idea. So that's about all I got for tonight, gentlemen. And I say, say good night, Ted. Good night, Ted. Say good night, Chris. Good night, Chris. Orange juice. <laughs> <laughs>